We turn now to the ideas of the balance of trade and balance of payments. Related but quite different ideas. Balance of trade is also referred to as, well, it, it can be considered the same thing as net exports. If x is equal to m, then trade is balanced. The balance of trade is equal to zero. You have no surplus, no deficit. If x is greater than m, if the value of exports is greater than the value of imports, then we say there's a trade surplus equal to the difference. If x is less than m, there's a trade deficit. Well, the deficit would be equal to if there's a deficit of $100 billion a year, that means imports are $100 billion more than exports. Now, another way to describe this is the current account. The current account is a technical term for what we more loosely call the trade surplus or trade deficit. If exports are equal to imports, then the current account is equal to zero. If there's a trade surplus, then the current account is positive because exports are greater than imports. If exports are equal to imports, the current account is zero. If exports are greater than imports, the current account is positive. That's a surplus on current account. If imports are greater than exports, then the current account is negative. This is all a bit strange terminologically. If it helps you, you can just think of current account current account is the same thing as net exports, x minus m. If x minus m is a positive number, that is the size of the trade surplus or current account surplus. If x is equal to m, there's no trade surplus, there's no current account surplus, balance of trade balances. If imports are greater than exports, exports are less than imports, then there is a trade deficit and the current account is negative. So that's the balance of trade or the current account. However, the balance of payments explains how it's possible to run a current account deficit? It's a pretty important question. If a country is importing more than it's exporting, where is it getting the money to do so? If there's a trade surplus, that's not so hard to understand. You're exporting more than you're importing. We have this vague idea that you're, you're making money on the deal. We'll see how in a sec. If exports are equal to imports, if trade is balanced, that's not hard to understand. You're exporting a certain amount and you use that to pay for your imports. But as a point of departure for looking at the balance of payments, let's look at the case where a country is, well, we're going to look at the balance of payments now. 
And we're going to start with this question. How can a country import more than it exports? Let's take a simple case. This, as you know, is Canada. And this, of course, is the United States. Some lakes here. Let's say that in a given year, a somewhat extreme example, the only trade between these countries in goods and services, the only current account trade, okay, current account, balance of trade is goods and services. That's an important point. Doesn't include financial assets. So let's say that one bicycle is made in the US, excuse me, made in Canada and imported into the US. So the US exports nothing and imports one bike. Now, the question is, where did the US get the money specifically the Canadian money, to import that bicycle. Well, something else must have moved the other way. And that something else was a financial asset of some kind. The capital account KA, the capital account, K, German word for capital, Kapital, refers to the flow not of goods and services, but of financial assets. Savings accounts, bonds. Stocks, ownership of American firms, real estate. Okay? Canadians can't import American real estate in this form of a good and service. You can't buy a piece of land and ship it back to Canada. But Canadians can buy ownership of American land. That's a capital transaction. That's a financial asset. And that's recorded on the capital account. Now, unlikely that it could be equal in value to a bicycle, it's a very small piece of land, very expensive bicycle. But let's just say in this case that the US must have exported some financial asset, let's say an American bond, worth $100. And that's what made it possible for us to import a Canadian bike worth $100. The idea here is that, now this looks a little odd when you see it the first time, that the current account and the capital account Balance. That's the idea of the balance of payments. That if the U.S. is running a trade deficit because it imported the bike, it can balance that deficit on current account with a hundred dollar surplus on capital account because we exported the bond. We exported some capital, giving us a surplus on capital account, which just balances the deficit on current account, allows us to import the bike. So the balance of payments balances. Other way around, from Canada's point of view, Canada is importing a bond, so Canada will have a deficit on capital account, 
financed by the surplus on current account. Exporting the bicycle, surplus on current account, allows Canada to import the bond, deficit on capital account. What we have for the U.S., as I've drawn here, is that the export on capital account, excuse me, the surplus on capital account, exporting the bond, finances the deficit on current account, the importation of the bike. One further wrinkle here is that a country might not have any financial assets that anybody else wants to buy, right? I've just, in this example, I've assumed that if, and, and actually that's quite accurate these days, this is, this is very much the case for the U.S. these days, that because lots of people around the world do want to own our bonds and our real estate and have bank accounts in dollars and hold on to dollars, and dollars themselves are an asset, not a very not one that earns a high rate of interest, but a dollar in a U.S. bank account earns you interest. A U.S. bond will earn you some interest. So for the U.S. today, we have very big deficits on current account. financed by very big capital account surpluses. We can afford to import a lot more than we export. In goods and services, because we export a lot more than we import in financial assets. So that's the situation. But it might be if you're, say, a country like Moldova, But what if there's little demand out there in the world for Moldovan financial assets, which I suspect is the case, then it's hard to export them. It, it's hard to generate a surplus on capital account to finance your deficit on current account. So there are two more possibilities. Moldova might end up having a balance of payments deficit because there's no surplus on capital account big enough to cover their current account deficit, two other places they might be able to get money. Uh, central bank reserves of foreign exchange. That is to say, if the Moldovan central bank has some US dollars, it could use them to finance the trade deficit make them available to Moldovans so Moldovans could use those dollars to buy American goods and services. Or there might be some international transfers available either from expatriate Moldovans, Moldovans living in other countries might send dollars home or another source of dollars from outside the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank might provide Moldova with dollars but somewhere if they're going to run a trade deficit <coughs> 
If there is a deficit on current account, a trade deficit, if imports are greater than exports, any country, any country has to figure out a way to pay for the imports. One way, which the U.S. can use, is to export a lot of capital. If people out there in the world want to own your financial assets, you can do it that way. Uh, if you can't do it that way, in the case of Moldova, then you've got these two possibilities. And the way you end up as a client of the IMF of the World Bank, which I suspect Moldova is, the way you end up that way is if you say, okay, we're importing more than we're exporting, but nobody really wants our financial assets. The central bank is out of reserves of foreign exchange and expatriate Moldovans, there aren't enough of them to finance our import bill, so we'd better go to the IMF and the World Bank. One way or another, you've got to balance your payments. Okay, that's a wrap.